Hi students, a little bit of a different video style today. This video is a follow-up to a conversation we had a few days ago in class. Um, Simon had asked a question about accent, his pronunciation, and we had about a 20-minute conversation in class about some of the steps you can take to um, reduce or to get around your accent difficulties. And I wanted to collect those different ideas into a short video and also to offer some reassurance uh, about the whole concept of accent and your pronunciation. So this big question that we have is feeling like my accent is my problem, that my teacher can understand me, my friends can understand me, but people out in the community cannot understand me. And how can I do about that? Um, what can I do about that? My first thing that I really want to start off with is reassuring you. I want to reassure you. Um, this word reassure means give comfort, give um, advice, give uh, strength to something. And the most important thing for you to remember and for me to convince you about is that it's okay to have a different pronunciation. Even when you think about people who speak English from birth, they're born in the country that speaks English, they speak English all of their life, they have difficulty communicating with other native English speakers. Um, I just put up this quick little list to run through with you, right? We have British English pronunciation, and then Scottish speakers, people from Scotland, speak very different um, form of English. People who are Irish from the country of Ireland, they speak a very different pronounced English. Um, people who are Welsh from the country of Wales or from the region of Wales in United Kingdom, they're all inside of United Kingdom, all speaking English from birth and possibly having difficulty communicating between themselves. I know that I do have a difficult time. I have to adjust my ear when I'm listening to a speaker who is Scottish, a speaker who is Irish. Um, coming into the United States, right? We have this central United States, the Great Plains English, the Midwestern English, which is what you hear in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota. But we also have Southern American English, which is a completely different pronunciation, a lot longer sound in the vowels, um, very slow pronunciation. We have a different pronunciation in the Western part of United States with California. It's a very fast, clipped pronunciation. Some places in the Eastern mountains, in the Appalachian mountains of United States, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, Virginia, West Virginia, they have a strong, strong accent that's difficult for me to understand, even though we're both speaking English. Australian English, again, is different. Canadian English, again, is different. So having an accent doesn't mean that you're a poor speaker of English. Um, your accent is formed when you are so young that often it's really difficult to get rid of it. And there might be programs online that say 90 days. In 90 days, we can teach you how to speak English without an accent. Ah, I don't buy it. I don't believe it. As a language teacher, you will always have that small piece of accent, but there are ways to reduce, to reduce your accent. Now, yes, you can train yourself. You can be taught how to move your tongue in a specific way. Actors and actresses are very good at this, but normal average people, we, we don't have the training or the time to train our tongue. So what we have to do is think about ways to reduce our accent and to make our pronunciation and our communication more uh, understandable to the people that we're talking with. So the first thing we have to do is analyze. You have to analyze your own speech to figure out which piece is the difficult one for you because each speaker of a different language 
is going to have a different um, difficulty for speaking. In class, we talk about how Arabic speakers often have difficulty with B and P, B or P, G and K, think or thing. Speakers of Nepali often have difficulty with CH or SH. Is it shu or chu? Uh, speakers of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean languages often have difficulty with L and R, L or L. Just because your home language doesn't have that sound. So what you need to do is analyze yourself, um, try to determine what is the difficult sound for you specifically. One way to do this is to record yourself and then compare your recording to a native speaker of English. Um, using your phone for recording is the best thing that you can do. Find an audio file, an audio file on YouTube, a movie, anything that has a native English speaker. Listen to their pronunciation, record yourself using the same sentence, compare the two. Or talk to your American friend and ask them, honestly, what, what's the difficult part of my pronunciation? But many people will feel uncomfortable um, telling you this is what you are making a mistake at. Um, it's that very super artificially nice American culture where we don't want to be impolite and say something that, ah, this is really bad, this is really wrong. Ask your teacher, ask me, ask another teacher that you're working with or a tutor that you're working with. You have to identify which is the sound that's difficult before we can move forward in addressing that difficulty. Then we can do something called a focused practice. A focused practice for that difficult sound and using something that's called minimal pairs. Minimal pair is where we have the exact same word, but one sound has been changed. So for example, if you know that B and P is a difficult sound pair for you, you Google search for minimal pair, B and P, and you will find lists of words that have both B and P, and then record yourself. So by pi, B P, big pig, by pi. Ooh, this one even has a listening that you can listen to. Bay pay, bear pear. You record yourself, listen. Am I making the difference? Am I not making the difference? Um, if, for example, my difficulty is um, TH, minimal pair, TH and D. For example, 30 and dirty, 30 and dirty, day or they. You find a list of minimal pairs for D and TH. 3D, 30 dirty. And I run through those pairs with that focused practice, a focused practice of the difficult sound, searching for a minimal pair, G and K, minimal pair, E and E, A and I, minimal pair, L and R, minimal pair. The next thing you can do to really help people understand is just, just, just slow down, just slow down. I know that we want to speak as fast as an American. We think that speaking faster makes us sound more natural, but what it does is adds an extra layer of difficulty onto understanding your pronunciation. When you're speaking fast, it makes it a little bit more difficult for that man or woman out in the community to be understanding you. Slow down. Use your clearest pronunciation. Another important thing for us to think about is emphasis. 
emphasis is where the strength is placed on the word or on the sentence. Um, the emphasis of the word can have a big impact on whether or not it's interpreted correctly by the person who's listening. So if we think about the word going, going, I'm going, the first part of the word go is the strongest part. This has the emphasis. If I say going, it sounds very, very, very strange. Um, in American English sentences, most of the emphasis is placed on the nouns and verbs. And these other words like for, to, in, become less emphasized. So when I say, I am going to go, it sounds very strange because I'm putting equal emphasis on all of those words. I am going to go. The most common would be I, going, and go. I'm going to go. You hear stronger force, stronger emphasis on those words. So listening to the pronunciation patterns of a native American speaker, a native speaker of English, listening to the pronunciation pattern of a certain word. For example, the word progress, progress. You hear a strong pra, progress. She made a lot of progress. But when that word changes to a verb, I don't say she progressed. I say she progressed. And gress has the strength. Gress has the emphasis. Um, your dictionary app, your translation app, if it has speaking and pronunciation, will be the best place to hear the emphasis of the word and then compare it to how are you pronouncing the word. So if there is a specific word that it seems like when you say this word, your coworker doesn't understand you. Go to your dictionary app, listen to the pronunciation of the recording on the dictionary app, match your own pronunciation, and see if you're having a problem with the emphasis of the word. The last thing for us to think about is how you can talk around a word. You can't remember a word you can't seem to pronounce correctly this word. This aspect of speaking is called circumlocution. Circum from circle, circle. Locution is speaking. Circumlocution is how you can go around a word that you cannot seem to pronounce. So you're speaking to somebody and you are saying the word scarf, scarf but they don't understand you. What else can you say? A long piece of fabric, a long piece of cloth around the neck for winter time. Scarf. You're trying to describe the specific type of um, rain jacket, raincoat. For me, the word rain, the R, is really hard for my pronunciation. I struggle with pronouncing the letter R. So instead of saying a rain jacket, a rain jacket, a jacket to keep out water, a jacket to keep out water, this is circumlocution. How can I talk around that word? Okay, so overall, these main ideas about accent and how can you um, reduce, how can you reduce your difficulty with pronunciation. First of all, you will always have an accent. I am sorry, your accent is beautiful. Embrace it, appreciate it, because you can't always get rid of it, okay? How can you focus on specific pieces of pronunciation to reduce your accent? Analyze your own speaking, compare, your pronunciation, identify that difficulty in pronunciation. What is a difficult pair for you? Make a search of minimal pair.
find a list of minimal pairs. F and V, F and V. If these are difficult for you, minimal pair, F and V, you will find a lot, a lot, a lot. And then record your pronunciation. Compare it to the dictionary app. Compare it to your translator, Google Translate app. Um, I'll make a video showing how we can do this focused study of minimal pair. Slow down. Slow down. Often we are trying to speak too fast, too quickly. We want to use that reduced American pronunciation, and that just makes it more difficult. Emphasis. Are you emphasizing the right syllable? Syllable. Syllable. Are you emphasizing the right syllable? Or are you using different emphasis, which breaks our understanding? Um, Listen to your pronunciation of the word. Listen to the emphasis in the dictionary app that you use. Finally, think about how can I talk around? What's my difficulty? B and P. Can I use a word that doesn't use B or P to describe this? In class, we talked about the very last thing then, of course, is writing it down. Writing it down. Um, sometimes we have to. We have to write down the word because my pronunciation, this man or woman's understanding and listening, we are not having a strong communication between us, so I write down the word. Sometimes it's necessary. Don't give up. Keep trying to improve your pronunciation. Understand you will always have an accent. And then, of course, also, there are always people out here in the community who don't even try to understand. They hear your accent and immediately they stop listening or they stop trying to understand. So you have to ignore those people and let it go when that's happening. Don't give up, students. Talk with me in class if your pronunciation is your, your special difficulty and we'll see what strategies, what ideas can we come up with on reducing your accent, reducing your pronunciation difficulties. Until next time, take care students. Bye.